Welcome to Socials with the Saints. This is a special time for us to take a break and meet a, a role model who can teach us some important lessons and inspire and accompany us in our daily journey. Today we're going to have a social with Saint Henry the Oso. So grab a cup of tea or your favorite beverage, a beverage and enjoy this time as we meet Saint Henry. And in addition to learning his story, we will walk a bit through history. History is so important because history enables us to develop further a, a better understanding of the world in which we live, building knowledge and understanding of historical events, especially when reading about a courageous person can be so inspirational and edifying. You can download a pamphlet about St. Henry the Oso to collect and to share with your family and friends. It can be found on our Pilgrim Center of Hope web a website, pilgrimcenterofhope.org, as well as some saint cards with his image and different quotes related to today's social. The saint we will meet today is especially connected to us at Pilgrim Center of Hope. We met him 28 years ago when my husband, Deacon Tom, and I were looking for a location to begin an evangelization ministry, which is Pilgrim Center of Hope. Well, we did find something, a vacated convent that belonged to the Teresian Sisters, which is a religious organization founded in Spain. Guess by whom? Yes, Father Henry de Oso. As we presented our vision for this ministry and a desire to rent this building uh, from the Teresian sisters to Sister Nancy, who was acting as her manager, she nodded her head and she, as she heard our proposal. Part of that proposal was to help parishes establish a home visitation ministry to reach out to households with an invitation to attend church and various activities offered to help them in their spiritual growth. As Sister Nancy listened intently to all, to all of this, she seemed happy because, you see, their founder, Henry the Oso, envisioned his religious sisters to visit homes and invite families to church and to religious formation. She explained that Father Henry the Oso would tell the sisters that upon visiting homes, they would mostly, like, mostly likely reach the woman of the home who is the heart of the family. And in doing so, she can encourage her family to come to church. Well, this took place, this meeting took place the month of June of 1993. A week later, she was planning to fly to Madrid, Spain to attend their founder's canonization by Pope John Paul II. As Sister Nancy, Tom, and I continued our discussion with enthusiasm, she gave us a, she gave us a tote bag with his name on it, and in addition to his name, a title given Henry the Oso, which was Pilgrim of Faith. Well, this caused excitement. The, the ministry name we chose for our evangelization ministry was Pilgrim Center of Hope. And here, Father Henry the Oso was being called a Pilgrim of Faith. Father Henry the Oso was canonized on June 16th by Pope John Paul II in Madrid, Spain. Sister Nancy was there to attend a marvelous celebration along with several other Teresian sisters. What great joy! Well, this is the reason we have embraced Saint Henry the Oso as one of our patron saints. So when you drive into the main entrance of Pilgrim Center of Hope, you see a large statue of Saint Henry the Oso to the right. He remains here with us as a sign of his work and vision to reach as many people as possible with the good news of Jesus Christ. Let us discover the incredible story of Henry the Oso. Henry the Oso was born on October 16, 1840 in a city, well, Tarragona, which is a port city in northeastern Spain's coast, uh, the Catalonia region. region. He was the youngest of three sons. His parents were good Christians and educated their children in the faith and in prayer. His mother wanted her youngest son to be a priest. And one day she expressed this desire to Henry. He, however, was convinced his vocation was to be a teacher. Well, his father's idea was very different. He wanted his son to work in the commercial business. 
When Henry was 12 years old, his father sent him to be with his uncle, his uncle Juan, who had a textile business in Zaragoza, Spain, which is the eastern part of the country, so that he could begin to learn the trade. And during the months that he spent there, he did learn the skills needed for the fabric business and became very familiar with the accounting side as well. Well, while there in, in Zaragoza, Henry contracted a fever that almost caused his death. His uncle was worried about his health and entrusted Henry to the Virgin Mary under her title of Our Lady of the Pillar and asked her intercession for him. And also he asked that he be administered the Sacrament of the Sick, which is also called the Sacrament of Anointing. It was during this time he also received his First Communion. Here he was, at the age of 12, on his deathbed. It wasn't long after that Henry recovered and everyone attested to his recovery to the prayers of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Our Lady of the Pillar. Despite the notable recovery, his uncle decided to take him to his parents' house. His aunt had given him a book titled The Works of St. Teresa that introduced him to St. Teresa of Avila and it ignited a love that would last a lifetime. St. Teresa of Avila was a Carmelite nun from Avila, Spain, who lived in the 16th century. St. Teresa lived a contemplative life and founded many monasteries in Spain. When Henry was 13, his mother died. After her death, he remembered her desire to become a priest. And so he began to think about it, seriously, think about the priesthood. And since his father would not agree to it, well, he wrote a farewell letter to him and secretly left for the monastery of Our Lady of Montserrat to dedicate his life to God. Now this monastery of Our Lady of Montserrat is located in Barcelona, not far from his hometown. Upon seeing that Henry was determined to become a priest, his father gave his permission to enter the seminary. And during his years there, his love for God grew even more. Henry's greatest desire was to know and to love Jesus and make him known, through, known and loved. He worked tirelessly to help others. Once ordained to the priesthood, Henry exercised his priestly ministry everywhere among all social classes, preaching, encouraging, giving retreats, teaching religion to the children, and classes in the seminary. He began founding different groups for every age and station in life, all based on the spirituality of St. Teresa of Avila, that Carmelite nun whose writings inspired him deeply. Some of the groups he founded included the Friends of Jesus Club, for children to teach them to love Jesus and to talk about him every day and to do whatever he asked. The Teresian Apostolic Movement to form youth according to the spirit of St. Teresa. The Brotherhood of St. Joseph, a pious association for men. A monastery of Carmelite nuns, the Society of St. Teresa of Jesus. His greatest accomplishment in life, which he was inspired to found while at prayer during the night of April 2nd, 1876. They are also called the Teresian Sisters. And with the approval of the spiritual director and the blessing of the, of the new um, congregation, which began on June 23rd of that same year, Father Henry was a young 36-year-old priest at this point. So young and had done so much. Eight young women did respond to the invitation to join this new society of St. Teresa of Jesus. And in his lifetime, this society spread throughout Spain, Portugal, Africa, as well as the Americas. And today, the Teresian sisters minister in 21 countries throughout Europe, Africa, and the Americas. Their ministries include education and evangelization in a variety of settings with people of all ages and walks of life. In addition to his many apostolic works, Father Henry also spent much time writing, inspiring others to know and love Jesus. He was founder and editor of St. Teresa's Magazine until his death. 
He wrote a manual for catechists, books for, book, for children about St. Teresa of Avila, and also on St. Joseph. He told two of his sisters shortly before his death, Jesus is loved very little. Let the three of us write a booklet on how to increase the love of Jesus in the world. These words of Father Henry meant a lot to us at Pilgrim Center of Hope because that has been our mission from the beginning, bringing people to Jesus to experience his love and in turn increase the love of Jesus in the world. Those who knew Father Henry were inspired by his apostolic zeal and his passionate love for Jesus. He worked tirelessly to help others know the loving God he had, he had come to know and his goal was to allow Jesus to transform his life that others would see Christ in him. In January of 1896, at the age of 56, Father Henry wrote the following words in St. Teresa's magazine. My Jesus and my all, let me love you or die, rather to live and die loving you above everything else. Do not let me leave this world without having loved you and made you known and loved as much as I can. My Jesus and my all, praise be Jesus, my love. These words summed up his life's desire and were something prophetic because later that month, on January the 27th of 1896, he went home to his Heavenly Father after having made a retreat at the Franciscan Monastery. Upon hearing the, the death uh, of Father Henry, his friend, Father Francisco Marcel wrote, the servant of God, Henry the Oso, was the most faithful model of Jesus Christ that I have ever seen. His speech, conduct, and actions always made me think, that is how Christ acted. On the day he died, he appeared to several persons in Spain and America. He is entombed in the chapel of the Society of St. Teresa of Jesus in Tortosa, Spain. On October 16, 1979, he was beatified by Pope John Paul II. And after the approval of a new miracle in Uruguay, Father Henry was declared saint by Pope John Paul II in Madrid, Spain on June 16, 1993. The church whom he loves so much and serves so faithfully rejoices as she offers this model of holiness to the world. Saint Henry the Oso pray for us. We were so blessed to find this building that once housed many Teresian sisters. Thanks to many friends and benefactors, Pilgrim Center of Hope was able to purchase the property from the Teresian sisters. Oh yes. Of course, the statue of St. Henry the Oso remains on the property. In addition to this blessing, we were given a first-class relic of St. Henry the Oso by one of the Teresian sisters. It can be found in, our, in the Centrist Chapel. We invite you to visit us and venerate this relic and see the statue of St. Henry the Oso and see the unique place that is reaching out to thousands with the message of Jesus Christ. Friends, the lives of the saints teach us a lot and affect our cultures. Praise be Jesus. We can become friends with the saints in heaven. They can become our friends through their prayers and their witness. They are alive. They are members of the mystical body of Christ. They have reached their goal, the heavenly Jerusalem. You can download the pamphlet about St. Henry the Oso to collect and to share with family and friends. And it can be found on our website, pilgrimcenterofhope.org, as well as the cards with his image and many of his quotes related to today's Social with the Saint. Thank you for joining me. May the Lord bless you abundantly. And don't forget, you are not alone. Our friends in the communion of saints can pray for us and walk with us when we invite them to do so. God bless you.